Hello guys, uh, sorry for the recent lack of videos, but I have a pretty cool video coming up. Um, I just got done some programming contest somewhere uh, at some place, and I decided to do one of the questions for you because it was interesting and I was actually able to solve it because the problems are really hard. And it'll teach you a few things, and hey, it's fun, and I haven't done a video in forever, so here we go. So it's this problem called palindrometer, and basically what you want to do is you're given, I'll skip this boring story, but you're given like an input, like a number, and what you want is you want a palindrome. So and a palindrome is where uh, one side equals the other side. So and you want to basically output the number of at, like single one adds you did to get to that. So I had to add one once to get to a pound drum here. And for 121 padded with three zeros, I had to add 979 times to get some pound drum. I forget what it is off the top of my head. I think it's zero zero five zero zero zero. I don't know. Something like that. But uh, and no, this one's zero zero five zero zero. But anyway, um, all right. So we can do that. You have to think of the algorithm for that, but it's actually not that difficult. So let's get at it. Uh, let's see. We're basically going to we're going to read in the pound drum, and let's do a string pal equals because this is this is really simple at first, just so we can get the algorithm down. And we want to keep it as a string because. The problem with conversions from strings to integers in most programming languages is that uh, padded zeros magically disappear because they're not significant. So we have to somehow avoid that or compensate for that. So, alright, so we have this palindrome, and if you try and think about the best way to go about this, we want to be constantly adding ones if it isn't a palindrome. So we're going to have to have a method that checks to see if the string is a palindrome. And we're going to have to have a way of adding one to the int that it's stored in the string and compensating for that, those zeros being chopped off. So I think a while loop would do really good with this. So while uh, pal, maybe do while is palindrome, pass it pal. So while it is not a palindrome, I feel like that would work really well. So let's go ahead and do generate method stub. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and we are. So should we do this or this first? I think we should do this first. So what we want to do is we want to add um, one to the numeral representation of the palindrome. So there's a couple things we're going to want to put up here, but I'm going to go ahead and start here and then we'll get to what we want. So the first thing we want is we want the number representation. So, boom, very simple. Now this is where the leading zeros will be cut off. So that's why up here we should probably have a length. So the length of this string. And you'll see what I do with that in a second. So now that we did this, we can just do numpal plus plus, boom. And then now we have to convert it back to a string. Easy as pie. Okay, now this is the part where we have to make sure that it still has the same length as the previous string, which it could only have done, only have not had the same length if it had lost zeros. Now, you don't have to account for, say, um, the number increasing in length due to ha one having added because all nines is a palindrome so it's not like that would ever come up so this would definitely not go into this while loop okay so we have to do another while loop in here so while this new pal dot length that we have added to it is less than that original length we recorded at the very beginning we have to uh, kind of pad a zero on the front of it. Pal equals zero plus pal. Very, very simple. But it it's simple when you look at it, but 
it takes a lot of thinking to kind of come to this unless you've done something like this before. Okay, so we convert the string to a number, we add one to it, we convert it back to a string, we make sure that it has this while it uh, make sure it has the same length that could have been lost by those missing zeros. Okay, now our is pound gem method. This one's going to be a little tricky. And we're also going to be adding a few things down here at the end to finish up after we do this. Okay. So you're probably thinking to yourself, okay, we have this number zero 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 and we want to compare two different sides of it. Okay. We're gonna need a for loop. We're gonna need to go through it. A for loop that somehow goes through it. and compares this to this so it has to go through from both sides at the same time. Ooh, tricky. Okay, so we're gonna have a 4 int i equals 0 i is less than pal dot length because we're gonna be going through the whole length of the string. Well, i plus plus. And this will handle going this way but we also want to handle going this way and we can't have another for loop in here because that will go all the way this way without incrementing i at all. So we're just going to kind of stick a little fixy thing in here. I don't know. So we're going to have an int j, and we're going to make it pal length minus 1. Uh, so we don't get any index out of bounds errors, because this would produce something like, um, this would produce a number that is greater than the index, since we're going to be indexing the string. And in some programming languages other than C-sharp, you would have to use something other than indexing the string, but I'm sure there's a caret method or something like that, which is just as good. Okay, now we have to check if the pow i, now this would be the first one. So if this pow i does not equal this one here, so it's going to be pow j, then we know, hey, it's definitely not a pound jump. So let's just go ahead and return false right there. Boom. We can get it maybe on the first try most of the time. Now, after this if statement, before we increment this i and go through again, we also have to decrement this j so that we can again go to this one and this one. Okay? And that's all that's all we need. Boom. Except all the way at the end, hey, if we haven't returned false yet, hey, we know it's a pound jump. Let's return true. Alrighty. Now that we have this simple little thing done, although I'm sure a bunch of you are going, oh no, it's not simple, but just, you know, pause the video, go back, look at it, try and understand as much as you can. If there's some unfamiliar concepts, this is more like, I guess, an algorithms tutorial than under than doing C-sharp concepts, but uh, which is what, what all these problems are. I, I might even go through a few of these that I haven't even solved yet and see if I can get through them. They're actually some really, really toughies. But, uh, okay, back to this. All right, now that we are going to have, or now that pal is basically going to be transform transformed into this, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> pal is going to be transformed into this new palindrome. So how are we going, ah, oh, drink of water. How are we going to be able to find the difference between this? and which is really important because it's going to say the number of say in this case it was miles that the person needed to travel in order to reach a palindrome so we're gonna have to somehow store the old value so we can do something simple like string old pal equals pal up here All right. now this part is actually pretty simple <laughs> I know I've been saying simple way too much but so we have to have an int difference and then all we have to do is subtract pal minus old pal parse pal minus 32 dot parse old pal boom it's the difference and then we are going to write c pal plus pal difference plus difference. Alright, save. Let's run it. No errors, looking good. Okay, let's think of a palindrome. So what would this one be? It would be 1001. 
with one mile. So let's see if it worked. Oops, that's one thing I forgot. I always forget this. Oh no, don't crash on me. <coughs> okay, pal, one one zero zero one or one zero zero one difference one. Okay, we know it worked for that. Now what if we do a palindrome already? Pal one, good, awesome. And then finally, let's do a really tricky. Let's go back here. Let's see. They had one zero 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 one two one had nine hundred seventy nine. Let's see how fast it does that. Boom. Nine seventy nine. <clears throat> so, what I would suggest doing, um, although my video time doesn't really allow me to do this, is to write this out, get this all done, and then if you still don't understand it, step through it and see where this is going. See how this while wow loop is working and how it's checking each time and see how sometimes the zeros get lost, which is why we need to use this other while wow loop. And also really look into this, how it goes from both sides at the same time. It goes dun, 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 and then it'll end up either, depending on if the number is odd or even, checking dun, dun, Oops. <laughs> or checking this one with this one before it then returns true if it is a pound job. Okay. Uh, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Um, sorry for not having released one in a while, but college is busy. And if you'd like to know any more tutorials, like to hear anything else about C Sharp, Java, uh, or anything else that might be cool on my channel, make sure to send me a message, leave a comment, and subscribe as always. And finally, I did not even actually expect this, but I was accepted as a YouTube partner, so woohoo! So we'll see where that leads me. And I'm about to go crazy coughing, so I better leave right now. This is Quackware signing out.